some bacteria can penetrate the endothelial cells that line the blood vessels. Well hidden from the immune system, these bacteria can multiply and infect other cells of the vascular wall, the endothelial cells. Endothelial cells recognize the bacteria and in response they produce substances that promote inflammation and create further contact points on the cell surfaces. This attracts blood cells, monocytes, which then bind to the endothelial cells. Some infected endothelial cells subsequently die and the blood vessels lose their elasticity. This so-called endothelial dysfunction is the first stage of atherosclerosis. The next step in the development of atherosclerosis is the formation of so-called fatty streaks. Some white blood cells travel into the vessel wall and differentiate into macrophages. By absorbing harmful cholesterol, they turn into foam cells. Periodontal bacteria promote this process, leading to even more fatty deposits in the blood vessel walls. The foam cells die off gradually, forming a dead core within the fatty deposits, which becomes even larger as other immune cells like T lymphocytes are added. The narrowing of the artery reduces the blood flow. The affected tissues specifically the heart tissue in the case of the coronary arteries, do not receive enough nutrients or oxygen. Bacteria that cause periodontitis additionally promote the emergence of substances that attack the underlying connective tissue. As a result of the tissue damage, the vascular deposits eventually break up leaving a wound where blood coagulation takes place. A blood clot develops. This clot further narrows the blood vessel and may even cause complete closure. A heart attack or a stroke may occur as a result. The inflammatory substances produced by the damaged endothelial cells are spread throughout the body by way of the bloodstream. The periodontal bacteria in the blood cause a generalized inflammatory response, which further stimulates the progression of atherosclerosis.